Hey everyone, welcome to GeForce. My name is Shannon Morris and I am joined by Justin Walker to talk about the GeForce RTX Super Series. So we have the RTX 2060, the 2070, and the 2080 Super cards. Why were these created in the first place? Well, these GPUs were created for more performance. Our RTX 20 series of graphics cards was first introduced about 10 months ago. And during that time, we've spent a lot of time tuning clocks, tweaking performance, improving our processes and yields. And as a result of all that work, we've been able to increase performance in our Turing GPUs. And that's allowed us to create these three graphics cards and to deliver 10 to 20% more performance than the original. Can we get a little bit of information about like the features that are built into these? For what sure. makes them super? All these GPUs are based on our Turing architecture. First and foremost, they all contain RT cores, and these run ray tracing calculations about 10 times the speed of previous generations, and that allows you to enjoy real-time ray tracing in games for the first time ever. They contain tensor cores, which allow us to use artificial intelligence or AI to speed up your gameplay. You can speed up gaming performance by 20%, sometimes up to 40 or 50% using dedicated AI cores. We have a new feature called variable rate shading, which allows us to direct the processing power of the GPU to areas that need it the most, save it on areas that don't need it, and that can also speed up performance. We have a new feature called mesh shaders, which allow you to more efficiently process geometry. Game developers can create worlds that have more detailed geometry or more objects and process it more efficiently. And finally, all our Turing GPUs, um, we added support for concurrent floating point and integer calculations. Those are just two different types of math calculations you have to do when running games. And because we can do them concurrently, it allows our Turing GPUs to run at higher performance and more efficiency, particularly on newer titles that have more complex or more visually rich graphics. So I do want to cover each of them in detail and talk about the specs. So let's talk about the RTX 2080 Super first off. The RTX 2080 Super has 11 teraflops of FP32 performance and 11 tops of N32 performance. That's up from 10, respectively, from the original 2080. We also equipped it with faster memory, so it has a memory operated over 15 gigabits per second, which is the fastest memory that's ever been put on a GPU. Wow. So that's the fastest of our Super graphics cards. It's going to let you do 4K gaming, and of course, you're going to be able to enjoy ray tracing with all the settings cranked up. Okay, the RTX 2070 Super, tell me about that one. Sure, the RTX 2070 Super, this one has nine teraflops of FB32 and nine tops of N32. That's up from eight from the original RTX 2070. What's cool about the 2070 Super is this is actually faster than our previous generation 1080 Ti. That was our flagship Pascal GPU. Yeah. That was a $700 GPU. The RTX 2070, it's $499. You get better game performance than the 1080 Ti plus you get ray tracing, wow. plus the AI acceleration, plus all the new features like variable rate shading and mesh shading, um, and it's more power efficient. Now what about the 2060? The RTX 2060 Super has seven teraflops of FB32 and seven of N32. That's up from six on the original 2060. In addition to that, we've equipped it with more memory. So the 2060 has eight gigs of GDR6 memory, wow. which is up from six mm -hmm. from, the, pre from the, the original 2060. We also widened the, um, the memory bus. So it has a 256-bit memory bus, where the, the original 2060 had a 192-bit bus, which gives us over 30% more memory bandwidth for even better gaming performance. So is the 2060 Super comparable to the RTX 2070, the original? Yeah, the 2060 Super is almost the same performance as the original 2070, and that's at 399, so that's a pretty good deal. Now, since all of these are the GeForce RTX Super line, they also do ray tracing. We've heard, especially during E3, we heard about all these different games coming out with it. So since many of those games have not come out yet, why would a consumer want to buy one of these right now? Well, I think when a, when a gamer is thinking about uh, getting their next GPU, they're thinking about this investment. I mean, these, these are high-end GPUs. These are a bit of an investment. You're going to want to be able to play your favorite game with all the settings turned up. So you're looking forward to playing a game like Cyberpunk, or you're looking forward to playing Call of Duty, or Control, or Watch Dogs. You're going to want your brand new GPU to be able to enjoy that game with all the settings turned up. And ray tracing really is the biggest thing to come to real-time computer graphics in like the last 10 or 15 years. It makes your games look amazing. It's a way to realistically simulate light and shadows, and it gives your games a whole new look and a whole new level of realism and immersion that you just can't really get any other way. So do you expect the adoption of ray tracing to pick up in video games? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, game developers are, are, have been very excited. They've really embraced the idea of real-time ray tracing because it makes their games look better. It makes them more immersive. All the major game engines have integrated ray tracing. Unity has it. Epic has it. A lot of the first party engines now have it, like Frostbite or id Tech, the Remedy engine, the 4A engine. So now the technology is in all the game engines. 
It's in the APIs that are out in shipping. So the ecosystem's here and it's ready. So I certainly expect the adoption of ray tracing to continue to be strong. Thank you so much, Justin. It was such a pleasure to talk to you about all of these new graphics cards. I'm so excited about them. So am I. For more content from GeForce, definitely check out our YouTube channel. My name is Shannon Morse. Thank you so much for watching.